Hello and welcome back to Joe's Math Tools. In our session today, we are solving another algebraic equation. So if you're ready, let's get started. In solving our equation today, you can notice that the setup is a bit different from what we would usually see in our typical equation. But remember that regardless of how many terms are on any side of the equal sign, we are still using the exact same steps to solve our equation. So let's get started. I'm going to return my 6n back to my equation since most of my calculation will be taking place on the right hand side of this equation. And I'll return my 2n and I'll begin by applying my distributive property for my parentheses. Now I have to go through this very carefully. Remember that whenever you are applying the distributive property, it usually happens with a, with a number or a variable or something in front of our parentheses that we are distributing. But please remember that even though we just have the minus or the negative sign here, however you want to refer to it, remember that there is still a one in front of this parentheses. So even though the one is not written, you're going to have to remember that whenever you see this minus sign and you're distributing it, it's just like you're distributing negative 1 to everything inside our parentheses. So I'm going to erase this all. And now we're going to begin distributing our term. So my minus 1 will be multiplied to my n. This will be equal to minus n. And then we're going to distribute the sign also to my negative 4, which will now be a positive 4. So now that we have expanded our parentheses, let's begin by simplifying our equation. So 2n minus n will equal to n plus 4. And since my 6n is on the left hand side, I'm going to move my single n to my 6n and now simplify for my equation. So 6n minus n will equal to 5n equal to 4. And remember that we're now applying our steps when we have multiplication involved, meaning we're dividing our 5 on both sides of our equation. So my 5 will cancel on the left hand side, leaving us with just n. And my n will equal to 4 fifths. Okay, so now let's check our answer. We said that our n was equal to 4 fifths. So now we're going to substitute that 4 fifth everywhere in our equation that n appears. And remember that these type of equations when we have fractional answers are just there to help strengthen your fraction skills. So don't feel nervous or intimidated when you see these type of numbers. Just work them out the way you would usually work with your fraction questions. Okay, so let's simplify. Remember that your 6 outside the parentheses is being multiplied to the numerator. So our whole number is being multiplied to the numerator. It's just like saying that we had 6 over 1 being multiplied to 4 fifth, which will equal to 24 fifth. So this is why we multiply the whole number outside the parentheses to the numerator. So this would be 24 fifth. And 2 times 4 will equal to 8 fifth. And for our parentheses, we're going to distribute our sign again, just like we did in the first step. So four, so my minus to my four fifth will be negative four fifth. And again, that negative to my four will equal to a plus four. So now to simplify, what we're going to do is find our LCD. So we are finding our LCD. And we know that the LCD for all four of these terms is going to be five. So everything that has a denominator 5, we're just going to put that back. So 24 fifths already has a denominator 5, so we return our 24. 8 fifths, we'll just return our 8 being added to my, sorry, let me correct that. Being subtracted is our 4, and my 4 here has a denominator of 1. And remember that to change it to its equivalent form, 1 times 5 is 5. So 4 times 5 will equal to 20. So we're returning a plus 20 to our equation. So now that everything has the same LCD, we're going to just 
move our fraction and get rid of that denominator of 5. So now let's simplify our equation. So 8 minus 4 is 4. Turn it back by 24. Plus 20 will equal plus 20 will equal to 24. So we see that both sides of our equation are equal to 24, which means again my n equals to 4 fifth is the correct answer for our equation. So remember that whenever you have these fractional answers to always practice solving these equations. Plug in your fractions and get started. If you're rusty on your rules for fraction, remember to brush up on that a little bit and then come back and try out these questions. But remember that regardless of how they look or how difficult it may be, all you need to do is get started. That's the first step in solving your equation. And when you're ready to learn a new skill, make sure that you come back to Joe's Math Tools where we make math easy.